everybody, so it's time for the review of the Lexmoto ZSXF. So I've had this bike for a few weeks and I've been using it, you know, to get around town and for the odd trip. I've not done too many videos on it, I've done a couple of how to ride, how to, well, what to expect you CBT type videos, but I haven't really done too many riding videos on it. But I have been using it. And it's a great little bike. Now, there are a few things that I really don't like about it and there's a few things I really do like about it and there's a few things to talk about in its comparison to the Honda CBF because it is so similar to the Honda CBF that everyone will say, oh, it's just like a Honda CBF. And it is. I'm six foot four, I can sit on it comfortably, it's not uncomfortable. However, there is not enough room between the pegs and the cutouts on the tank. Um, it's just, you know, my shin is too long to fit in there. But as I say, I'm 6'4". So it's not uncomfortable, it's just they don't fit into the gaps. They're just sort of kind of off where they're supposed to be. So it feels a little bit weird. It's not the most powerful or the fastest 125 in the world, but it will do 70 and we will get to that. But as you can see, I just my toes as I came here and there. That's another problem, big feet. And it's got quite low pegs. Um, it's a brilliant handling little bike. The suspension's not highly sophisticated. It can feel too firm at times and too soft at others, but generally it feels fine. I've been mean, going along now, it's very comfortable. When you get into the corners, it doesn't wallow or anything like that. Even with my weight on it, it just holds its line and pulls itself out. Brakes are standard 125 brakes, they work, but you know, they're not gonna rip your face off. Now this bike's about 15, 1600 pounds. Now the interesting thing is, the Lexmoto Adrenaline is also the same price. However, on the Lexmoto Adrenaline, you get engine, frame, wheels, bit of plastics, that's basically it. With this, you get quite a few more bits. Obviously, there's more plastics, more which are nicely made. As to be said, that's solid, and it's all put together nicely. There's no, there's no vibrations, there's no nothing rattling around. You just seem to get a little bit more for your money with this bike. See, look at this, it's just, it's, it handles brilliantly. Anyway, where was I? Yeah, you used to get things like, this has got a fuel gauge on it, a bar electric um, fuel gauge, which seems to work fine. Still get the gear position indicator. Okay, it's quite a simple dash, but it tells you everything you need to know. I have ridden the CBF, and I'd say that this feels a little bit sharper, and the suspension's a little firmer, which gives a better feedback. Uh, there was only one bike that I've tried, so I can't say that without question that's the way it is. But between this and that, the one that I tried, yeah, basically, that's the way that it seems. Now I say it's not the fastest 125 in the world, it just doesn't, you know, it doesn't pick up super quickly. You don't feel any real pull, but it gets there. And it gets there relatively quickly. It just doesn't feel like you are. I mean, you can keep up with traffic absolutely fine. And I'm doing 30 in second. That's 40. See, no, it does. And actually, there is something very strange about this bike that I will get onto. It is the speeds it's capable of doing in different gears. The gearing on this seems so weird because you seem to be able to go relatively quickly in like second but fifth doesn't give you much extra over fourth. You'll see, you'll see. Now when I get to talking about the controls and walking around the bike, there is a couple of big things that I strongly dislike about this bike. One of them's fixable. Well, actually they're both fixable, to be honest with you. Um, but one of them's an easy fix. It's got power to pull you through the gaps in traffic, which is basically this, what this bike is made for. It's a brilliant little city bike, little commuter, and I've used it mainly for that. You know, just getting around town. There we go. Right, nearly 30 in first. Fifty in second. 
probably doing 60 in third. It will go a little bit higher. About 62 in third. Now we're stuck in traffic. Do you see what I mean? It does 50 in second. 63, 63-ish going up a hill in third. We've still got two more gears here going on here. Now obviously I am revving the living daylights out of it and you don't want to do that on a regular basis but I'm just showing you what this engine in the gearbox is capable of doing and the, the weird sort of ratios it must be on. Sixty-five, sixty-six is in fourth. Sixty-seven, I need to come off it. Sixty-eight in fourth, going to fifth. Sixty-seven, not today. The gear ratios are all over the place. It seems to be really, really like long gear to start with. But as you get up the gears, they shorten them. And so I have had 71 odd out of it. So there you go, people want to know what the performance is like. That is an absolute flat out bearing the needle approach. Keeping in mind, it has six foot four of me sticking out the top of it. Now, one thing to note is this is carb, not injected like the CBF. But frankly, on 125s, I would actually prefer having a carb it gives you a bit more punch. And also, they're a lot easier to fix. Side stand or centre stand to pick from. Side stand is one of the things I need to talk about. You've seen some around the bike shots of it already, but yeah, there you go. It's uh, it's all right, it looks all right. It's quite futuristic looking, quite transforming on the front. I quite like that headlight. It's got a ra rack on it, which, you know, they're immensely handy and normally very ugly. And it's not too bad, you know, I. I could probably live with that, but if you didn't need it, you could take it off if you wanted to. Okay, so let's do the controls and stuff. Obviously, clutch, front brake, throttle. Um, kill switch is there. We've got the lights on and off. Now, the front light is always on. However, you can have a side light, so it's just a small bulb, or you can turn it off but the tail light comes on and off with that, but the headlight still stays on slightly. Basically, this is just gonna turn your tail light off, so just leave it on all the time. Start button. Um, pass light, high beam, low beam. Indicators, horn, and you have a bar mounted choke. Because I say, this is carved. On the dash, hopefully you can see this, you have speed in the middle. You have your uh, total miles at the bottom there. Gear position's in that little box there. It's not showing on because I'm in neutral, as you see the lights on. And then it's got the one, two, three, four, five, five bar fuel uh, gauge. So very basic one, two, five controls. The mirrors aren't bad. Don't look too bad either. In fact, I feel like I recognize these are off some sports bike, the shape of that part anyway. I don't know what it is though. I can't work it out, but. Okay, so I mentioned a couple of things I strongly dislike about this bike. Um, now, one of them is caused by European law, which is if you have a side stand fitted to a bike, which stays down when you put it down, you have to have a kill switch on it. This doesn't. So what this does as standard is you push the kickstand down to about there, then when you let go, it'll automatically pin itself back up again. So when you're putting the bike on its side stand, you sort of have to put your foot on the thing, put it down and put the bike like that, and then pull back on it and hold it like that as you get off then when you lift the bike up, even the slightest amount, it whips itself straight back up again. That's how they are as standard. As you can see, try again. As you can see, this one doesn't do it because I've modified it. Because I nearly dropped the bike in twice in the first day because of that side stand. It's very, very easy to remedy. Basically, the main bolt which goes through and holds on the side stand has a pin on the end of it. Lop it off and it will just work like this. Anyway, as I say, it is a big issue for me. I don't like it, but it's easy to fix. Literally five minute job. Uh, I've spoken to Lex Moto about this. Now, the European law requires it. MOT doesn't, as far as we know at this point in time, uh, which means you can do this. It's not a problem. And so you just have to remember that if you're in first and you start it and it's on the side stand, it could jump off the side stand. However, they would rather that if it was done, it was done through one of their um, dealers, or at least I think just, just to make sure that it's been done safe and everything's back on the bike correctly. 
if you want to do it, speak to Lex Motor, or if you've not got a warranty, do it yourself, take the bolt out. And as I say, you, you'll see the bolt's like this, there's a little extra pin on the end of it, which just catches part of the mechanism, and you just chop that off. The other one, I'll go around to the other side of the bike, where it's a bit brighter, and you can see, is, well, this is something that is quite funny. You might notice that the rider pegs and the pillion pegs are exactly the same in both regards. This is so dodgy at times because there's nothing holding them down. There's no positiveness to hold those down. It's just your weight of your feet on them. Um, and obviously what can happen is at traffic lights, you lift your foot up and you sort of knock it up and you're going to put your foot down and it's not there. Now I found very quickly you get used to this and you're like, every time you go to you put your foot down, you're like, where is it? And you can just hook it down again if you've caught it with your foot. Um, you normally notice yourself doing it, but that is another thing which is very bizarre for a bike to have non-sprung foot pegs. So side stands very easy to fix, but these unsprung foot pegs, not quite sure how you go around fixing that one, if I'm honest. I'm sure Lex might have some ideas, maybe there's some aftermarket type pegs, or you'll just get used to it and, and live with it. Um, but it's just, it's, it is unusual. But that is all the negatives I can give. It's those two things. But otherwise, as I say, it's a nice looking little bike. Oh, another thing, versing the CBF. CBF has a tail um, storage compartment, which is very small, the battery's in there as well. And the, the lid, the seat part, comes off. Off. On the floor, most likely, as you know. This one, hinged. Not sprung. <laughs> hinged. There we go. Uh, tool kits in here and you see this little thing and you're like, well, what's the point of this little hole? It goes on and it goes on and it goes on all the way down here. There is a little gap at the top so don't put loose change and stuff in there because they'll probably just end up falling down behind the rear wheel. But, you know, that fits. Um, I've actually found that you can fit a full 500ml Coke bottle in there and like a chocolate bar or something. You, you can fit bits in there. It's a handy little space to have for sure, and the fact that it's on a uh, hinge, for me, is a win over the uh, CBF. The exhaust is quite large, it has to be said, but it sounds alright. What you're hearing when I ride is nothing like what the actual sounds like, because it doesn't reflect back. So it actually sounds better when you can hear it properly. I don't know if an aftermarket can is made for it yet. I think they have managed to sort of retrofit one, or someone has, but there isn't one sold for it. But it's all right, but it is a little bit big. I mean, it's a 125. It doesn't need that much sound deadening. It didn't need to be that big, but that's something that may change in the future. Oh, one thing actually, um, CBF fees, this, this has rear disc brakes. Now, I'm not sure if they've updated it in more recent years on the CBF, but I'm pretty sure that they all have drums on the back. Solid. See, it's not, nothing's breaking off, nothing's rattling about. So being a 125, obviously fuel economy is very good. It's just basically a great little all-rounder bike. It does what it says on the tin, as it were. Very, very much like the very loved CBF 125 made by Honda. However, this is 1,000 pounds cheaper, and I'll be honest, I don't see where that other grand is build quality feels perfectly good and very much on a par with the CBF. In fact, it's very little to pick between them and I actually think the swing arm on this is better made than the CBF swing arm. So, you know, I'm not trying to say go one way or the other necessarily, I'm just saying they're both great little bikes, one's a bit cheaper. Thank you to Lexmoto for the loan and I will make it clear here, I'm not paid anything by Lexmoto to do these reviews. I'm giving my honest opinion and that's the agreement we have, which is if I don't like something, like the side stand, like the pegs on this, I will tell you. You know, they're 125s, they're cheap and cheerful and they're fun to ride and they do what you need them to do. Which, you know, 17, 18, 19, 20, before you get your A2, is all you're after really. I have also reviewed the Lexmoto Adrenaline 125, you'll find a link for that in the description. Um, if, if I was picking between the two bikes, I'd choose the Adrenaline every time, but that's because I love supermotos. So, you know, I would say that on many, many cases. If it was going to go for a 125, that was a pigeon, um, I'd choose the adrenaline.
but if you want something that's commuting and it's got some space for a box on the rear you know a bit of storage under the seat fuel gauge bit of wind protection that sort of stuff she's a beaut that's what she is i'll catch you all next time it's also the spicy 110 signature sv650 which will be their demo bike for about four months or longer um, and it will probably go on sale at some point in the future so you've got my stickers on the back stickers on the front i will be doing a video on it um but it's not quite ready yet as you can see i've only got one lever on 